and we have uh, now uh, Professor uh, Young Soo Kim will be uh, presenting here on a high performance computing program. Hi, Professor Kim, how you doing? Okay, uh, let, let me just check the screen if you guys all see and hear my voice. You sound uh, wonderful and we see the screen. Okay, uh, sounds great. So uh, yeah, let me get started. It's, it's all you. you have. I'll, I'll pass off to you. Okay, uh, thank you very much. It's great to see you, James. <laughs> Even in Zoom, the first of all, we're seeing our faces. <laughs> uh, First of all, uh, thank you very much for giving me an opportunity to introduce our high performance computing initiative at Cal State San Bernardino. Uh, thank you everybody for coming. And my name is Young Soo Kim. I serve as high performance computing faculty fellow and I'm also assistant professor of mathematics. For today, I just wanna go through some of the things we have done in the past two years I serve uh, the, the faculty fellow for the year 2021 and 2022. This is going to be my second year. This is somewhat our brief history of what has happened to us. Uh, it's quite probably informal. So if you have any questions or feedback or suggestions, feel free to stop me or drop anything in chat. I'll try to respond as, a, uh, as well as possible. Okay, so let's get started. Well, our uh, our mission of ITS, uh, one of the one of the parts is fostering faculty-led innovation and research. Well, sometimes our innovative research requires a lot of resources. That's how this uh, HP, HPCI fits into this mission. Well, on top of that, our 2020 to 2022 ITS strategy plan, so goal one, objective four, is something about high performance computing. So it's readily available for anybody here. So I just wanna highlight that this part, establish partnership with the faculty community to utilize high performance computing and the Pacific Research Platform in partnership with IBM. Okay, let me give you a brief history of HPC at Cal State San Bernardino. So it goes back in 2015, uh, Sam wanted to look for resources for our faculty members. Uh, and he, well, at that time, of course, things like machine learning and big data was less popular among people. But at the moment, uh, Sam wanted to look in advance to see what kind of resources we can grab when our faculty needed some. He looked for several options. The option, the first option, or the option we followed was uh, Exceed, Extreme Science and Engineering Discovery Environment. This is a portal for supercomputer. Uh, we had, had started communicating with Exceed, but it turned out that the resources or the setting they offer didn't really fit our faculty needs. Then uh, what we ended up doing was uh, instead of hosting or maybe bringing any uh, any physical facility to campus, we use uh, San Diego Supercomputing Center for their HPC resources. That's back in 2017. In the same year as at Scenic, they introduced the Pacific Research Platform. So Pacific Research Platform is a NSF funded place where they host a bunch of HPC here. We joined this program, and ever since 2017, we are one of the heavy users of Pacific Research Platform High Performance Computing Resources. Uh, so everything is what I heard from Sam uh, uh, last year around this time. Okay, so let me briefly introduce you uh, what it means, what Pacific Research Platform is. It's a, a national research platform. It's a partnership of more than 50 institutions, and we are one of them. And led by researchers and cyber infrastructure professionals at UC San Diego, and is supported in part by awards from NSF. And this is their web page. Okay, next I want to introduce our high performance computing team at Cal State San Bernardino. So our you know biggest supervisor is Dr. Sam Sudaka and uh, also Dr. Owen, who is AVP for faculty development and CAT for ATI. And we also have two people from IT department, Dr. Dung Vu and Jason McDonald. 
In addition to them, I, I serve as HPC faculty fellow. Okay, here's our revised webpage. Uh, we worked on the webpage over the summer. Uh, so previously, because ATI has two subdivisions, was one's X Real Lab and another one is high performance computing. So the full URL is really long and horrible, but now we have a shortened one. So if you just go to www.csvsb.edu slash high dash performance dash computing, it will direct you to this page. I also intentionally searched for CSUSB HPC on Google several times. So now if you Google the, these two terms, probably the top hit is going to be our webpage. Okay, then what is high performance computing? Well, uh, these are pictures, so maybe a small you know, hand mixer with something more powerful, but let me give you a little bit more formal thing. I believe several of you are familiar with the term, oops, sorry about that, the familiar with the term supercomputer and how you know, high performance computing is different from supercomputer. So this is an article or the message I captured from the source fast tech. A supercomputer is one big computer while high performance computing is many computers working towards the same goal. High performance computing is the aggregation of computing power. Uh, supercomputers are customized to perform a specific task, but HPCs can be adjusted to meet other requirements. So in the past, supercomputer is uh, built for dedicated purpose, but now recent days, nowadays, high performance computing, they aggregate the computers you see on a daily basis. And with that power, we can achieve various goals. Okay, so what kind of resources do we have on campus? Uh, as I mentioned previously on a previous slide, that our first option is Pacific Research Platform. Since 2017, we are a member of them. They have uh, several hundred cores and GPUs and memories available and a huge amount of storage. In addition, sometimes you have to you know, transfer a lot of data if they have high-speed internet. It's not the same as high-speed internet you use at home. The high-speed is uh, slightly different in this term, but they do provide a lot of resources. Well, in addition to that, uh, several software can be tested and in installed on our table, depending on our taste. And this is really good testing bed for us. Uh, in addition to a platform, we can do conduct a lot of research. Our second option used to be Exceed. Uh, this started in 2015, but the whole project ended September, to, September of this year, just last month and they moved on to a new one that's called Access. Our webpage is not up to date with Access and one of our goals is to update the information about Access. And this is a portal for supercomputers. So if there are anyone who already knows a lot about details, how much resources they need, this can be excellent, so excellent resources for their research. Well, in particular, let me give you some examples of Pacific Research Platform resources. And this data is available to public, so you can just go to their webpage to see. I just want to highlight a few terms. There are lots of lots of nodes and clusters. They have several uh, cores and CPUs, and they have a huge amount of RAM. It's not just one cluster. There are a bunch of them, and there are about 70 or 100. They vary depending on the purpose. In addition to that, as a member of a uh, Pacific Research Platform, our campus carries two servers as well. And one of them is a recent one is quite powerful in the sense that uh, it has a large amount of GPUs. Um, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with it, but nowadays getting a GPU is really hard and high-end GPUs are very hard to get, not only that they are very expensive. And NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3090 is a top of notch GPUs. We do have eight of them, but with some technical issues, we can only use about four to eight, depending on day. So the day I captured the data, six was available and three was in use. And these resources are available to 
anyone on campus. So any faculty at Cal State San Bernardino and graduate and undergraduate student can use the Pacific Research Platform resources. And Pacific Research Platform is funded in part by the NSF. And since spring 2022, we also support a GPC for classroom. In addition, uh, we have our Jupyter, our own Jupyter Hub, and that is open to any campus members. For this Jupyter Hub, one does not need to prepare anything. You can use your Coyote ID to access it directly. Well, nowadays, you don't really have to go to a server room to use anything. Every resource is available over the internet, so you can just use your browser to access or use to utilize our resources. Okay, here's a list of HPC project, El Cal State San Bernardino. So I'm just gonna pause for a second, um, a few seconds for you to see, um, you know, the list or the members here. Of course, we will try to help you if you want to part of it or for if you want to explore our HPC resources. Okay, so in addition, here are our HPC classrooms for this current semester. And there are three faculty members who are actively using our HPC for their class classes. Okay, as a mathematician, I was always told to provide some examples. So let me give you a few examples of our, of our project. So the utmost uh, project is with our X-Real Lab and Dong Wu is leading this project. And X-Real Lab uses lots of graphic resources, a so lot of GPUs. So recently we were able to set things up for them and X-Real Lab utilized Blender. So Blender is here and Blender is running our server. That's a photo over here. This is an example of a GPU intensive project. Another project we supported was by Dr. Visca and Kramer. And this is a video they have. Uh, they did 3D modeling for uh, Wadi El Hudi and that they use a lot of storage and graphical resources to render images like this. And the full information is available from their, their webpage. Instead, let me just play 30 second video for you. Yeah, so team actually visited Egypt with their, you know, team leads and students, and they captured, they took all the photographs from there, and they gathered information into single piece, and this is actually their final result. Mm -hmm. And you can find more exciting things when you visit their webpage. Uh, lastly, I want to also introduce how, how much resources you can grab so Dr. Renna Singham is in the math department. One of the software he uses is R, and we provide R with R Studio. So instead of photos, I brought the amount of resources he used, he could use. Uh, as you can see, at a single time, you know, we were utilized, we were able to utilize fairly close to 300 CPUs, and at the same time, very close to 250 gigabytes of RAM. So if your task or work requires a heavy or intensive amount of resources, we are able to provide that for you through our Pacific Research Platform resources. Okay, so now this, these were done before we got into Jupyter Hub. So around spring of 2022, Don guided me to Jupyter Hub and Jupyter Hub is a very powerful platform so what it does is like it provides a multi-user version of Jupyter Lab or Jupyter Notebook. And in some sense, now we don't really have to worry about uh, checking their credentials anymore. Our Jupyter Hub is utilizing our dual login system. I believe uh, several of you who are familiar with Python already have a seen uh, Jupyter Lab like this. Our Jupyter Hub provides a platform for, uh, for sub such, such as Jupyter Lab for multiple users.
Okay, so this is kind of the basic setting for Jupyter Hub. If you don't have anything, it comes with pretty like plain login. And once you log in, you can select from lots of ready, ready uh, made images there. Uh, what we did for our Jupyter Hub was we customized it. So here's our link. You can get the link from our HPC webpage as well. So over summer, we customized our Jupyter, Jupyter Hub. A lot of like front end is uh, customizer. So it says welcome and hello. It gives you some information and gives you how what's done and some information about our university as well. So since last fall, we have over 150 total users and the number is also increasing. Not only the front page, we also touched on upon uh, stack selections. Now our users can dynamically create their server depending on their taste. If they want the GPUs, they can choose them and they can also choose GPU type. If they want many cores, they can you know, increase from well, we can set the max a little higher, but for the purpose of uh, the today's presentation, I brought the one with the 64. And the same goes with RAM. And we provide about 20 to 50 uh, gigabytes of storage for each user. So you won't probably have to worry about running out of storage as well. And these images are somewhat ready-made. Uh, a lot of them are ready-made, but something like SageMath is custom-made. And for all those custom-made stacks, we also keep the data here. And this web page is available to anyone. So if you uh, happen to get to the link here, I, I know it's pretty long. This is just, just for reference. You can see what kind of ingredient there is. It's completely open source. Uh, so if you, you can also see what we are doing, not just a kind of black box. Okay, using uh, Jupyter, Jupyter Hub, we can do several uh, additional things. So for instance, Dr. Becerra's class, we provide a lot of a lot of IDEs as well. So you are familiar with, I'm pretty sure you're familiar with Jupyter Lab and Jupyter Notebook, and several people are interested in using R. So our Jupyter Hub provides R Studio IDE. And in addition, Dr. Becerra wanted to have a, a VS Code, which is another, another popular IDE. And our Jupyter Hub provides or uh, also has a support to VS Code as well. If that's something you're interested in, you can also use it via our Jupyter Hub. And another example of our Jupyter Hub is for one of the class classes. So I chose one of them, uh, Math 3465 is computational statistics taught by Dr. Renna Singh. So if you want to use HPC or for your class, we can even customize the front page to suit, to suit your need. For his Math 3465 class, we customize it this way. Well, because this is student oriented, we also wanted to reduce the amount of work for students to do. So for this particular Jupyter Hub, students do not have a choice to select images once they log in they're gonna go to RStudio directly. So once you log in, this is going to be the second page you're facing once your server loads up. In addition to that, we give a lot to our instructors. So instructors is listed as one of the admins and what instructors can do is they can actually create or start the servers for their students in advance. So when the class starts, everybody's just ready to go. Okay, there are, there are additional classroom, there are additional projects there are, like there's an exciting project, Dr. Joyce Pham using VASP uh, in chemistry and biochemistry, but I didn't have a time or research to include in my presentation, but there are also exciting projects in classroom where that use HP resources. Okay, so let me also briefly touch upon uh, the IDEs we provide in Jupyter Hub. So this is a web base. So if you're familiar with Jupyter Lab and Jupyter Notebook, you can still use exactly the same setting. Uh, we have R Studio. We also have a VS Code. If you need anything, you see that some other places have their own their Jupyter Hub. We are willing to investigate and have it implemented if possible, and also as soon as possible. So uh, in addition to that, to support our community, uh, the currently I'm working on creating a documentation for our Jupyter Hub. 
I know there are excellent documents for Jupyter Lab, Jupyter Hub, and everything else. But to use our Jupyter Jupyter Hub or HPC resources, uh, I thought it was a great idea or a good idea to collect common questions in a single single place. So now this is uh, still you know draft, but you know week or two I will try to publish it in addition to our HPC website. So on this page, this tells you how to create your container or server. So for instance, if you're teaching, you don't really have to teach your students how to do it. You can just refer them to our documentation page. Okay, so let me briefly uh, introduce available software on our HBC. So of course we have a Python and well-known thing, Python goes with a Jupyter, uh, Jupyter Hub, Jupyter Lab, Jupyter Notebook. And if you want to install anything that can be installed on Python, we can have that implemented or you can do it yourself too. The same goes with R and R Studio. So you can install any version of R you like, and we can also install R Studio and all the things are available to you and to your students and also your collaborators as well. In general, if you have any Linux based software, and there are, we can easily install, but if you have a Windows-based software, we're exploring that option too. Some we have succeeded, some are still ongoing project. And our plan for 2022-2023 is we would include, well, maybe putting more thorough documentation on top of that. And to support classrooms, we also want to support dynamically creating the servers for students and also maybe stop the servers dynamically. So instructors do not need to worry about uh, their student servers are running or not. Well, to expand our program, we hope to have some introductory section to campus members. Of course, we want to recruit additional faculty members, research group, and in particular, I'm very interested in exploring options with like non-STEM disciplines. If there are any resources you guys need, I'm willing to invest my time and our time to help you guys to guide through HPC resources. And there are more things that I can say, but I just don't want to go into the list of things routinely. Okay, lastly, I want to say uh, this again is year 2022. There's a new strat ITS strategy plan 2022 to 2025. So I thought maybe it's a good idea to grab uh, one of them. And so one of them would be the objective 1.5 state of art, state of art technology. So we can provide state of art uh, uh, technology to faculty, uh, students, and staff. So we can easily select and request new and use standard equipment, other quality technology. So as long as you have your laptop and web browser, you can access our resources anywhere you are, as long as you're connected to the internet. Okay, so I think I'm finishing a little too soon, but I don't think anybody will object that because mine probably is the last one for today. So maybe remaining minutes, I may answer your question, or if you want to start your project, I can stay and discuss your options. So feel free to contact me via my email, or you can stop by, or whichever way you like. I'm willing to discuss our resources with you and try to support your research and teaching that requires HPC as much as possible. Okay, and that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Kim. This is great information. I, I get to work in the x ray lab, so I know I'm doing some stuff uh, with uh, a few of the faculty that are involved in this program. Thank you. And, uh, I, and I know that uh, we're working with uh, you and, and, and a few other faculty that are some of the work that do in the x ray lab on some of the projects in Egypt. Uh, it's amazing to see that. And then I, just a follow up, I know our students, uh, our, one of our staff members, Bobby Lauderman, was working on with uh, done to uh, uh, for rendering some of the 3D objects and some projects we're doing uh, here for VR work. Uh, yes. it's amazing to see that. Yeah, that, that, that's correct. I think our campus has a lot of resources. So as much as you can use, we'll try to like provide as much as we can. So the more you use, the better it becomes. I think we're, the goal here is, is to really push out and get a lot more uh, use out of it. I mean, 
there's a few faculty that I was not aware of that were on the list. So I'm glad you had that list. Uh, yeah, so I'm maybe. like, well, I didn't know about that one and that one either. I know yeah. most of them, but those I'm really aware of. Um, but I think what we really need to do is for um, really get more faculty involved and more students involved. Because uh, we have a lot of the extra lab students here are working with Bobby who is staff on how this all works to do the rendering uh, for these projects. Yeah, so Doug and I had a little chance this afternoon to talk about that. So you probably want multiple members using Blender at the same time. Right. So we were thinking of like having a Jupyter Hub dedicated for X Real Lab. So multiple users can create their own server and test them out. And when you need to render, it's gonna go into the most powerful machine to reduce the time. Yeah, man, it was actually, the, the, before this your conversation, I was with the students and this is exactly what they're talking about. Okay, which computer can we focus on that's the most powerful and do the rendering? That's right. And, and then they were like, well, wait, but can we do this on multiple computers because they wanted to do more stuff? That's right, that's right. right. So hopefully like if you have like a four project then we'll grab four different servers for each project. If you have like a 10 of them, we can probably grab 10 <laughs> simultaneously and you can see more result much faster. And we do have uh, several GPUs available. Okay, this is, this is great. This is even more than I didn't realize. <laughs> and, and it's in my office over here. Uh, so thank you <laughs> and uh, I really appreciate it. I, I don't, is there any questions in the, in the chat? I'm just seeing if we have any questions here. Uh, I'll I'll say no because it's no. You cannot do cryptocurrency with this equipment. <laughs> yeah, that that's probably prohibited. Like something non-academic is probably prohibited. Yeah, that that it's it's got to be academic. And um, uh, but we, there's a, a number of projects that we can really utilize this resource. And we're very fortunate to have this resource here that Dr. Stocker was able to get this here and then we go to develop this uh, from there. So not seeing any more and you're right, it's a, it's a long afternoon. Um, I thank you very much. And I think we'll, we'll wrap up the first day of October Tech. Okay, thank you very much. Have a good afternoon guys. <laughs>